Good afternoon, everyone. Lovely to see everyone. It's wonderful for us to be together once more. This is a great day that the Lord has made and we're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. Welcome, everyone. I just welcome everyone this afternoon. I can see we've got Keith. Thank you so much for, for just, you know, just um, for the music and the praise and the worship. It's just been so inspiring. So God bless you. Thank you for that. You're, you're a real blessing to us. We thank you. We appreciate you. And Marcia, we appreciate you. We appreciate everyone. Tamara, thank you for joining us. Tryon, God bless you again. Another faithful sister, God bless you. Zuri, welcome. God bless you so much. Donna, thank you so much for joining. Charmaine, bless God bless you. you. Oh, lovely to have you. And um, Daniel, God bless you. And um, Barbara, good to have you this afternoon. Bless you. And Mother Brown, always a pleasure to be graced with you and your presence. God bless you all. Today is a great day, another day that we're alive, another day that we're breathing, another day that we got breath. As long as we've got breath, we can praise the Lord. As when our breath goes, that's when we can't praise the Lord any longer. But as long as we have breath, we're going to praise the Lord. So I just want us to just open up in prayer and just commit this afternoon's um, a service into God's hand this afternoon. So, Father, we thank you once more. Once again, we can come before your throne of grace, Lord. Father, it is always a pleasure, always a privilege that we can come, Lord God, where we can find grace and mercy to help in the time of need, Father God, for all our needs, for all our heart's desires. Father, we know we can come boldly to your throne room and there we can meet with you. So, Father, we thank you that we can meet with you once again, God, Thank you for everybody on this line, Father God, on this Zoom line. We thank you for all those that are going to be joining us later on, Father. We just want to commit, Father, every single thing, Lord God, into your hand. Father, everything that shall be said, everything, every testimony and every praise, Father, every thanksgiving, everything that, Lord God, that will happen in your presence here this afternoon, Father, we we reverence your Holy Spirit. We say, welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, you are welcome in this place. We welcome you. We say, come, Holy Spirit. Come and take your place right now, Lord. Be seated upon every heart, in every home, in every, in every, every, everywhere that I'm asking you, Lord God, to move in every way that you can, in every direction, hover over us and in us and with us and guide us, lead us, teach us, bless us. Father, we turn our hearts up and to you this afternoon to be, to be receptive, Lord God, of anything that you have us to receive from you, Lord God. We want to receive it, Lord God, and we want our lives to be changed. We want our lives to be impacted. We want to, don't want to stay the same, Lord. We want to move on from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Father, we want to really just advance in you. We want to be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. For so, Father, we, we ask for your strength. We ask for your guidance, Lord. We ask that your Holy Spirit will, Lord God, take precedence in this service this afternoon. We pray for our speaker, Father God, woman of God that you've called and anointed father we pray that the words that she will speak this afternoon it will be not her words but it'll be your word divinely um you will download to her every single word that she lord it will be from heaven father she will speak only what she hear you speak so lord god i thank you that lord our hearts are prepared this afternoon to receive so, Father, we commit everything into your hand. We just say, have your way, oh God. Take full control because we ask this all right now in the mighty, precious name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. You. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God is so, so good. So good. So good. So good. Amen. 
Oh, I tell you, I don't know how your week's been, but you know, the fact that you're still here and you're a survivor, <laughs> you made it, you made it through this week and God has been the one that's been helping you to get through it day by day, minute by minute, hour by hour. It's a journey and t- God takes us step by step. You know, he holds our hands and he just leads us and he just directs us and he teaches us and he helps us. You know, I've just, you know, just been so blessed this week. How I've realized how much we need the Holy Spirit as our helper. You know, so many times we're struggling. We're struggling with a task and we're trying to do it and we, we're not able to push past it. And, you know, God's just saying, call on me. You know, why don't we just, you know, ask, ask our helper to come and help us? You know, the, the, the Holy Spirit is such a gentleman. I know he's, and, you know, he, he's always there. He's waiting. You know, his arms are full, his arms are ready. He's w- willing and able to help us, but he's waiting for us to ask him. He's, ask, he's waiting for us to say, Lord, can you help me? He's saying, Lord, you know, if, as long as you think you can make it on your own, you don't need the Holy Spirit. But once you know that, you know, you, I can't make this journey on my own. I need your help. You call on the Holy Spirit and he's there to help you. You know, um, I just want to share quickly a a short testimony. Um, I had an assignment to do for my coursework that I'm doing. I'm I'm studying to be a mental health champion, ambassador, because that's that's what um, I believe that God's called me to really just to, you know, stand in the gap for for those that are going through mental illness and they don't have anybody that understands them. They don't have anybody that they can talk to. You know, they, they don't have, they, sometimes it's not always easy to go to the, to the, to the professionals, but you just want to talk to somebody that knows what you're talking about. You know, somebody that can understand your journey. And, um, um, it was. It's, it's funny that I started this course like three years ago, um, and um, I'm just coming to the end of it now. And I had a final submission to do, and uh, you know, it just seemed like it. With everything else that I had to do, it just seemed like an awesome task. And this this thing was weighing heavily on me, like you know, a sack of potatoes. And uh, and I just had to just ask the Holy Spirit. I said, Lord. You've got to help me. I was, I was going, help me, help me, please help me. And God helped me that I was able to um, submit it. And, um, and when I read it back, I thought, and I thought to myself, who wrote this? <laughs> I'm thinking, I, I'm not this clever. I'm not this clever. Honestly, I, I, I was so baffled when I read it. I thought, uh, who wrote this? It wasn't written by me. It was written by the Holy Spirit. And uh, I just want to say that the Holy Spirit is smarter than us, cleverer than us, wiser than us, more competent than us. So I just want to thank God that we all have access to that wonderful Holy Spirit. That's the comforter. (laughs) That's our standby. That's our advocate. He's our lawyer. He's he's, He's our helper. He's everything. When Jesus was going away, he said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send you the comforter. That is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that's going to be with you always. That means this Holy Spirit never, ever sleeps, never go, ever goes to bed. He never slumbers or sleeps. He was with you always. Even when you think you're going through some, t- some tests, some trials, some, you're going through some heartaches, you're going through some tribulations, and you think, God, where are you? He has been there all the time. And he, he promised, he made this promise. He said, I will never, ever leave you. He said, I'll never, ever forsake you. That means he's there even in the darkness. Even when you can't feel him, he's there. He's never, he said he's not going anywhere. He said he's going to be the right there with you. So if you're going through a storm, he's right there. If you're going through the, the battle, he's right there. If you're going through a sickness, if you're going through a, 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 a if you're going through a test, 
a, a relationship problem, problems in your home, problems in your marriage, financial problems. Don't worry. God is there. He's there. He's, he's not going anywhere. All you've got to realize is that you have, you have been connected to the, to the great almighty God. And he's promised you that he's sent in his spirit and his spirit will abide in you and rest, remain and abide in you. You can guarantee. It's not like one of these friends that said, I'm going to be with you. And then when the going gets tough, <laughs> they get going <laughs> and you don't see them for dust. He's not like that. He's not like man. You can guarantee he will be there through the thick, through the thin, through the rain, through the storm, no matter what the situation, he will be right there. So I just want you to know whatever you're going through, whatever the test, no matter what it is, God is right there. Just say, Lord, help me. That is a prayer. Sometimes we don't have words. And we don't have the words to say. We just say, Lord, have mercy. You know, my mom used to say that all, all the time. Lord, have mercy. She used to say that all the time. And I used to just laugh. But you know what? That was a prayer. Lord, have, I found it in the word. Lord, have mercy. And we're saying to the Lord to have, be merciful to me, Lord. Be gracious to me. Be kind to me. Come by here, Lord, because you know that you're calling on the Lord because he is, a, he is always there to be ready, waiting, willing, and able. He said, he said, a broken and a contrite heart he will not despise. All we have to say, Lord, I come to you. I'm sorry for all. Uh, for what I've made it. I thought it was about me. I thought it was about my career. I thought it was about my business. I thought it was about what I'm doing. But God said, no, it's all about him. It's all about him. We've got to get in line with what God called us to do. We've got to seek him first and then all things will be added onto, onto us. All we have to do is remember Put Jesus at the helm. Put him at the top. Put him at the, at, the, at the beginning. First fruit. And a lot of us know about first fruit because we've been meeting in the mornings and we've been given our first fruit of our day. First fruit as we wake up, it's hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As our eyes pop open, it's glory to God. We give you God thanks for another day, another opportunity that we can have him. Uh, um, to, to, to be in our lives, to, to really just, you know, like every day you wake up, you, you know, you expect something fresh to happen, something new to happen. And God is so gracious. He's always there to give us something new. There's always something new around the corner. There's always a new blessing. There's blessings for every day. So don't just think you can just rely on yesterday's blessings. We have fresh blessings every day, fresh, like fresh manna from heaven. And I just want to just quickly just read a, 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 a scripture and just to encourage you. And it's, it's about fear not. We don't have to be afraid in this world where we're ta they're talking about this virus, another virus, another risk or whatever. It's all, it's all a, a, like a scaremongering thing. It's that everything is out there to just make us more afraid. But God is reminding us we don't need to be afraid. We don't need to fear. We don't need to be worried. We don't need to be anxious. We don't need to be nervous. So I just want to just read a, a scripture just quickly. And I'm going to read it from Isaiah um, 41. And I'm going to start from verse 10 to 16. I'm going to stop at 16. I'm just going to read um, what it says here. And... Uh, it says, I'm reading from the Amplified. I'm going to read Isaiah 41 from verse 10. It says, fear not. And in my Amplified, it says, there's nothing to fear. For I am with you. You know, when the Lord's with you, you don't need to be worried. He's there. He, God is with you. You can, you can trust that he's, he's, got, he's got you. He's got you at the front, at the back. 
He's got you behind. He's got you everywhere. You're surrounded. He said, fear not. There is nothing to fear. But I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed. For I am your God. So he's telling us, look, why are we getting all flustered? Why are we getting all bothered? Why are we getting all upset and dismayed and full of terror? He says, I'm with you. You've got nothing to be afraid of. So it says here, I am. It says, do not look around you in terror and be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you. That's what it says here in verse, in verse chapter 10. It says, I will uphold you. And retain you with my victorious right hand of righteousness and justice. I love the amplified because it just brings it out so much clearer. So it's, I have to read it again. That is just so powerful. I have to read it again. It says, fear not. Verse 10. There is nothing to fear. For I and with you, do not look around you in terror and be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you and I will uphold you and retain you with my right hand. Of righteousness. I just love that. It, verse 11 says, Behold all they that are enraged and inflamed against you shall be put to shame and confounded. They who strive against you <laughs> shall be as nothing and shall perish. You shall seek those who contend with you, but shall not find them. They who war against you shall be as nothing. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. And I am the Lord who says to you, fear not, I will help you. Verse 14. Fear not, you who were Jacob. You men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord, your Redeemer and your Holy One of Israel. Verse 15. Behold, I will make you to be a new sharp threshing instrument with teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills like chaff. Verse 16, you shall winnow, winnow them and the wind shall carry them away and the tempest or the whirlwind shall scatter them and you shall rejoice in the Lord and the glory in the Holy One of Israel. So that's what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying, you know, like, you know, like you, 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 you've got your, you, you know, like you've got a best friend and you've got your parents or your mother. You know, when you're a child and you, you don't have to worry about bills. You don't have to worry about food. When I was a kid, I never ever worried about bills. I never ever worried about when my mom, whether my mom was gonna put dinner on the table. You know, I just believe that I've got my mom there. I've got my dad there, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get dinner tonight. I'm, I just believed that my, my mom was going to provide for me and everything was going to be okay. And that's what our Heavenly Father is like. He's there for us. He's there looking out for us. He's there making sure that everything's going to be okay. We don't need to worry. And that's why he says, fear not. I am with you. If you trust in the, in the one that's with you, you know that you've got nothing 
to fear. If you think about the greatness of your God, this is, we're talking about the one who made the universe. <laughs> I'm talking about, he's the one that made every single person on this planet. He's the one that separates the day from the night. This is, this is the God that says, I'm with you. This is, the, this is our great God that is with us. The one that divides the sea from the land. The one that puts the stars in space. He's our father. He says, I'm with you. You have nothing to worry about. I am with you. If he can put the stars in space, I'm sure he can sort out your little bill that you got to deal with. <laughs> I'm sure he can sort out. If he can put, if he can put the, the moon and the sun and the stars in, in, and, and all the planets in the sky, you, you think he can't deal with your little problem? You think God can't do that? We limit God. Think about how great God is and how powerful he is. And then we have a little situation and we think, oh, gosh, oh, God. God can do that with his eyes shut, honestly. He can do that with his eyes blindfolded. He can do that. That's small things for God to do. That's small matters. So I just want you to know that God said he's with us. He's with us. He's got this. He's got this. He's with us. So don't, you don't need to worry or to be dismayed. You don't need to be overwhelmed. You don't need to be fretful. You don't need to be troubled. He's got this. He's got you. So I just want to just encourage you this afternoon that our God is good. Our God is great. Our God is mighty. Our God is powerful. If you just realize how great God is, you wouldn't be worried. You would not be fretful. You would not be afraid. Our God is good. Our God is great. Our God is mighty. So God can do anything that he says he can do. And we don't have to worry. We don't have to be afraid. So I just want you to know that you're a giant. <laughs> you're a giant in God's kingdom. You're a giant. You're a king. You're a queen. Our father is the king of kings, yeah. the Lord of lords, and we are his kids. We are his offsprings. We are his royal citizens. We are the, his children, sons and daughters. Yeah. So if you realize how, how great your God is, you will just know that my father, my father is, my father is good. And he, he said, no, there's no, there's nothing that he cannot do. There's nothing that he cannot mend. There's nothing he cannot sort out. So I just want to just pray before we continue. And I know some of you are just thinking, wow, wow, wow. This is the God that we serve. Yes, this is the God that says I'm with you. So let us just commit this time to God. I want some of us have just got a revelation right here. I know I've just got a revelation. Even while I'm speaking, I'm thinking, wow, God, you're so mighty. Wow, there's no, nothing can stand against you. No demon in hell can come against you. Not even the gates of hell can prevail against us. He said, the, I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot stand come against us because we are his church we are his body we are his hands we are his feet so god is good and i'm just i know some of us it's just it's just exploding right now the light bulb has just gone on and we're realizing how how awesome this god is oh, yeah. so i just want to just Pray and just let that revelation just seep deep down within you and let it blow you to smithereens. Because sometimes when I, I, I imagine, I say, God, you're just, just, you're just awesome. Oh. You're just awesome. So, Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, for the revelation, Lord, of your awesomeness. I want to thank you for the revelation of your goodness. I want to thank you for the revelation of your mighty awesome power father you're telling us that you're we are not alone that you're with us you told us not to fear not to be anxious not to be worried not to be dismayed because you are there you have you are with us 
every minute, every second, every hour, every waking moment, you are there. So, Father, we acknowledge you. Hallelujah. We acknowledge you, your greatness. We acknowledge your mighty and awesome power. And, Lord God, we just want to say thank you that, Lord, you, you chose us. Thank you that you're in us. Thank you that you reside in us. Thank you that you have your abode in us. Thank you that we are your, your temple. And Father, we thank you that, Lord God, when we think about the awesome greatness, the wonderful power that you have within us, Lord God, we know we realize what we are limiting you. We're, we're putting you in a little box. So, Father, today we take the lid off. Father, we, we, just, we just say, Lord, have your way, Lord God, and just continue to download, download this revelation into our hearts that, Father, we truly, you are the empire of our hearts. You Amen. are the one that comforts us. You're the one that keeps us. You're the one that reinforces us. You're the one that surrounds us. Yes, You're the Lord. one that protects you, us. You're the one that guides us, leads us. You're the one that provides daily for us. Father God, we have nothing to fear because you are with us. Amen. You are with us. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that, Lord, that the, we will grasp the revelation that you are near to us very near to us, Father. You are seated upon the throne of our hearts. Mm -hmm. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you that, God, we can be vessels of honor. So, Lord God, to be carriers of you. Father, everywhere we go, everywhere that we, everywhere, every move, everything that we say, Father, we know that, Lord, you're in us and you're directing us. So, Father, we give you thanks for that. Yes, Lord. We give you thanks for Thank that. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We give you honor for that. Yes, Lord. We give you praise for that. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you for that. We, we honor you, Lord, for that. We bless you, Lord, for that. Oh, God, we, wo we worship you right now, Lord. Father, we worship you and say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We are privileged. We are, we are honored this afternoon to be sons, to be called sons and daughters. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Amen. God. Praise Hallelujah. God. Glory to Amen. God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God is so good. I just want us to unmute and just give God some thanks. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just want thank you to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Lord. You are the King Hallelujah. of Kings. You are the thank great Lord. I am. You are the faithful you one. Everlasting Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 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 Living for being with us as servants, so we thank master. you for being a king of kings. The enabling power, your favor, your mercy, oh, your tenderness, and your you love. love. Thank you, Lord. you are that has awesome. delivered us. Thank you, on you. Our and you. Father. We thank, thank you that you. we can be called the very dwelling place thank of you, you Father Jesus. God, where thank we house you, Father God, and you take your love in our spirit, ever present. It's not by our power, it's not by our might, it's by your spirit. Thank you, thank you, that knowing that in that we have been risen with you this afternoon, we seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand side of you, Father, in all dominion and authority, and all power over all principalities and powers, peace, 
So we exercise our authority and we give you thanks and praise, Father God, for your love, your exceeding love and mercy us, healing our bones, healing our mind, body, our soul, Father, you give us in our eyes, because your mercy is due every morning, and they're from everlasting to everlasting, Father. And the Father, you are a faithful God because your faithfulness is better than life itself, Father. And so, Father, we glorify you. We exalt you on high. We lift the holy hands unto you. And we adore you, Father. Yeshua Amashia, we thank you. Jesus, the anointed one, we thank you. Because you are salvation. You are deliverance. You are healer. You are Messiah, Father. Through your son, Jesus Christ, and Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give God thanks this afternoon. Amen. God is really, he's really showing us and he's really helping us and he's really teaching us. He really wants us to get it. We, sometimes we don't get it. We really don't realize well, who we have with us. If you know who you have on your side, if you know that you're, you're on the winning side, you, there's no defeat. You, you, ha- you have the victory, because you're on the you're on the winning side. So I just want to thank God that He just continues to show us daily, and to reveal to us things that we don't understand. That we might just get it. We might just understand. We might just comprehend. We might just get the revelation. This afternoon, I know there's so many of us on here that are just joining. We welcome each and every one of you. Thank you for. Uh, but another day in his presence, we just want to say, we've just been talking about the goodness of God. For those of you who are just joining, we were talking about where how God, this, the Isaiah said that we're, we're not, we ought to fear not because he's with us. And um, this, is, this is something that we need to know that God, he's there. No matter what, he's there. He, he's promised us 100% without a doubt. He will never leave us. He will never, ever abandon us. He will never forsake us. No matter what it is, he'll, he'll always be there. So we're just talking about the goodness of God and the greatness of God. So this afternoon, I just know that some of us, we've had some wonderful week. We've had some wonderful um, experiences this week. And I know that some of us just want to just share and just give God thanks for what God has done. You know, God is so awesome. He really is. He, he, he never fails to uh, uh, um, amaze me. You know, he always, I'm always amazed because I'm just thinking, my, my, that is, that is a God that I serve. He's, he really is truly amazing. You know, he really is amazing because uh, I know that, things that we've been been believing for, things that we've been waiting for. God is is working them out. And they're they're, they're soon to come to pass if they're not already here, let me tell you. But I I just give God thanks just for the peace of God. That's what I, that's what I love God for the most. I say, God, I love how you just give me peace in my heart. I just love how you just, how you just comforted in me daily. I just love how you just, you know, you just, you're upholding me. And you, you just, you know, I, I can lean on your, lean on you because I know that you're not going to crumble or you're not going to fail. Or, you know, I can know that you're, you know, no matter how much I lean on you, 
I know that you're not going to go under. You're not going to sink. You know, I know that, that no matter what, you know, we have that confidence. We have that assurance that he will be there to hold us up. Amen. He, he says, he even said, even in our time of weakness, he said, when we are weak, that's when he, his power becomes available. He says, when we are weak, that's when his strength is made available to us. Yes. In our <laughs> weaknesses. So in our weaknesses, God, we can, he gives us that strength. He is the one that strengthens us in our weaknesses. So we don't have to we don't have to think, oh, I'm weak and I'm and I'm 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 just gonna collapse. No, he catches us, he upholds us, you know. I he's just still lifting us up when we feel like we all our strength is gone. He's the one that's giving us that strength from day to day. So I know that many of you on here can testify of the goodness of God, and I know that. If you just have a testimony, just put your hand up. I can see two hands. I can see Keith. I can see Tamara. I know that if you have a testimony, you just want to share the goodness of God. I just want you to just put your hand up. If you don't know how to put your hand up, just unmute. We will see you and we'll know that you want to say something. So don't worry that you don't know all the techie um, things, but we know that just unmute. I know you, most of us know the mute button <laughs> and we know the camera button. <laughs> but yeah, but there's many of us that know other buttons. So, you know, whatever you want to say, I can see Daniel laughing already. I give God thanks to all of you. So I'm going to ask Keith and then I'm going to ask Tamara to um, share a testimony to the glory. Well, of I'm going to be I'm going to be chivalrous and I'll let Tamara go first. OK, Tamara, that's a gentleman right there. Tomorrow, if you can unmute. Good afternoon, everyone, or whatever time of the day it is for you guys. Um, it's morning, it's afternoon here. It was actually nearly 2 p.m. Yes. In the afternoon. What time is it there in Jamaica? It's after 8 in the morning. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for getting up early this morning to join us. That's 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 amazing. Thank you, Tamara. Go ahead. So, um, so this week, I was feeling a little discouraged. In fact, um, some weeks ago, I went on this fasting, and <laughs> in that same week, while I was on that fast, the very same day that I was on that fasting, um. I had this Saturday work that I do otherwise from the post office. And uh, the lady called me and she said to me, are you vaccinated? And I said, no. And she said, well, you have to get vaccinated. And I said, my choice is not to be. And she said, her family's at risk and all that. Anyway, so I said, okay, God, you have to show up for me for this because I am not going to go into that with her. Anyway, the fasting finished. It was a three-day fasting. The other week, I went on another three-week fasting, and I was just there worshiping and all that. And then the same lady called me back and said, um, I don't want you to get it wrong or anything like that, but... Just understand where I stand. And I said, understand where I stand too. So <laughs> the meat of the matter is that um, I am not working with her now, but the Lord has placed in my heart to start a small business by selling some natural juice. And he even gave me the name, but I don't register it yet. So, um, so out of a bad situation, there comes God showing up. All right, for this week now, I sell my juice and all that. And there's two persons that said something to me. And when I went, I came home, it was a bad review. 
And when I came home, I was saying, God, remember, I tell you, say, everything that I put my hands to, I want you to bless it. I commit this business to you and all that. And I was feeling um, a little down and I couldn't even pray. And I went down on my knee. I remember the Holy Spirit gave me a song. I want to know the first line of the song. And I went down on my knee and I started to sing the song. And that burden just lift. And then I just find out my joy for that day. And when I went to work, I said to the two persons, what is it about the Jews? That, and one was saying, this one, because I do punch too. So th that one was saying, it was too thick. But when I speak with all the others that had bought the Jews, they said, it is fine, Tamari. Don't let one somebody make you feel that way. And, and everything just left. Yesterday, no. <laughs> um, because I spent back all of that money, that cash, um, pumping back in the business, extending, doing more things. So I didn't have any cash. I didn't see the children, father, carry any money come to me. And I was just talking to God in my mind. And I was saying to him, God, I don't know what to do. So you have to show for me. And uh, I want to hear when the Holy Spirit said to me, be still and know that I am God. And I said, okay. I didn't have anything at all here, but the things just to meet the, the Jews and all that. And then in the evening, I heard my auntie call me and she said, do you want some soup? And I said, sure. <laughs> and I'm just saying that, oh God, the little things that we take for granted, God just show up for us. And we all we have to do is just trust God and know that God see every little details of our life. He is there in every details of our life and he will show up at all times. All we have to do is just acknowledge him. All we have to do is just recognize him and put everything in his hands and he will just be a blessing to us. He will just show up in every situation. So that's my testimony for today. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Um, Tamara, as you were speaking, I, I saw your mother, Sandra, and uh, I was reminded of your mother, Sandra. And for those of you that don't know, she passed on a few a few years ago, but this is what God was telling me. It's not the opinion of, it's not your opinion. It's not man's opinion, it's God's opinion of you. And the one thing I um, respected about Sandra is that she loved what she did and she did it and she, cause Sandra was a person that she cooked and she made uh, drinks and things like that. And she sold it. And she did it with a heart. And because of that, it became a ministry. Not so much her selling the food, but the amount of people that she reached for the kingdom of God. And she was a tremendous blessing. Every, they bought her food because of her and because of the Christ in her. And... One thing I recognize is that in spite of the situation and the circumstances that she faced, she was persistent and she was diligent and she was faithful in what she did. And because of that, God made a ruler over much in that she always sold uh, food. And whether you know it or not, whether you're conscious or not of these things, you know, God just... Um, I was just encouraged by your testimony. And I would say to you, God, God impressed upon my heart. That is what God wants you to do. And God wants you to be, wants you, God wants you to know that God is with you and God is for you. And, uh, you know, and as you were speaking, just God impressed upon my heart that I should send you some money. I should bless you in your business. And that I will do. I will do that because there's something, it's more than just a selling. It's a ministry that God has called you to tomorrow. Bless you. Thank you for your testimony. It's really very, very emotive. 
because I rem I just remember the passion that your <laughs> that your mother had that it, regardless of anybody's opinion she felt she was the best and she was the apple of God's eye and so favor was upon her so bless you bless you Tamara thank you Pastor Chris I, I realized too Pastor Chris that um, the Lord has been using me because at my workplace um, outside uh, on the road there are some homeless people and I always talk to God about them and before I even start this, I, it has been impressed on me to bring breakfast and all that. And I have started that. And Amen. To see what the Lord has put this because I always ask him, what am I here for? What am I supposed to be doing? Why am I not able to do something, a small business or something? And <laughs> there's so many things that now is just flowing that I want to do, I, I never see it or recognize it before. And uh, I know that um, some things that my mother used to do, I realized myself doing these things too. So <laughs> I'm just grateful. And I thank you really. I really thank you, Pastor Chris and everybody else. Thank you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for tomorrow, right now. Father, you know our heart. You know that uh, even when I met tomorrow, there's, there's such a, a resemblance in the spirit to her mother. Her mother was a selfless person, a giving person, a sharing person, always full of joy. In spite of her situations and circumstances, she never, ever uttered a negative word. She always saw the good side of everything. And Father, I just thank you that where there's even considered loss in Tamara's life, there's only gain because of who she serves. And Father, I pray by the Holy Spirit, you continue to order us footsteps. For you said in your word, you will not withhold any good thing from them that walk of uprightly in right relationship with you. And Father, mm -hmm. I just thank you that as she finds favor with you, that she will find favor with man. And so Father, just increase her boundaries beyond that which she even sees right now, that she will reach the unreached and touch the untouched in a remarkable and a supernatural way. And Father, of a truth, they will say, this is the best. Not because of her, but because of your love for her. So, Father, I thank you for sanctifying her and separating her onto a good work. Because this is your assignment for her life. In Jesus' name, be it done to your honor and to your glory. And to your praise in Jesus' mighty name. Will she not, may she not lack for anything concerning your will, whether it be finances, whether it be human resources, whether it be material resources, whatever it will be, Father God, you will make provision as you have given her the vision. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray and I decree and declare it done in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Bless you. Amen. Bless you, Tamara. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Keith, go ahead. And yeah, go ahead, Keith. Yeah, the, 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 I knew there was a reason for you being on so early. She was on so early. So, yes, I had to allow, allow you to go first by the grace of God. Um, amen. Um, yeah, mine's kind of two testimonies. Um, one is of when we do the early morning teachings on every single day, we talked about singlehood, uh, relationship and marriage. And there was one, I can't remember who it was that taught it. I think it was Brother Junior when he taught one about being careful of them that are around you. And, and I, I illustrated a, that I sacrificed the idea of me searching for a relationship. Now, in the past two days, I'm telling you, 
Pastor, I wanted to tell you this, but I, I was too worried that you'd crash the van. But <laughs> yeah, we literally put it this way. I said to God, ah, I don't want to be looking for a relationship, but according to you, Lord, I'll leave it in your hands. I know the Bible says, you know, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. <laughs> it should be who he who finds a good wife finds a good thing. Because trust me, there's plenty of sharks out there if you keep fishing for them. And uh, this person had been messaging me constantly, constantly, constantly. And if it wasn't for the teachings that we have had on this platform. So I want to testify about the goodness that God has used ministers and many people to speak about what to watch out for. Samson and Delilah, what to watch out for. For so many people in the Bible, that these are the things that were called to memory. So when this, these, these chaps, and I'm, I'm telling you, the person lives in a distant country to the UK, but the house is talking as if I am her one. And I'm just like, I was confused. Last night, my blood sugar went so high, my meter couldn't even read it. And I was getting dizzy. I couldn't operate my left-hand side. It was just stressing me out, confusing me completely. But then the teaching started to come. So I'm testifying about what we share is usable and functional. Because God showed me about my past. I've been scammed a lot in my past. My people who needed help, I reached out to help. Then they start with a lovey-dovey, pretty conversation. And it was stressing me out because I put myself in a hole by helping so many people that I forgot about myself. That I was in such a, a conundrum and indulgence. And it was, I'm testifying about what we teach in the word. Trust me, stick to the word. And the word will show you Proverbs. It will show you Samson and Delilah. It will show you because this could be vice versa. This could be the other way around too. A man approaching a woman. Trust me, stick to the word because it's bringing me such grace. It's actually helping me make decisions. It's actually helping me process things. I am not a confident, outgoing person when it comes to worldly things like even talking to a woman or engaging with a woman. If you're somebody I'm interested, trust me, you'd think, is that the same key? I wouldn't even get, get, get the words out. I'd be like that constantly. But because of the grace of God, the teachings that we have had, I'm testifying about how the word has been infiltrated and dropped into my spirit to the point where I'm quoting Bible scripture to this person and there's no combat. There's no, there's no conversation. And I'm like, yeah, you can't say anything now, can you? She's even using things like God and she's sending me all these indulgent, uh, basically these, these pictures that would entice a typical man, but it didn't with me. And all I saw is when she shared this picture with her cleavage and I thought, um, why are you wearing a, a vest top with Christ? That was the only symbol I saw. So I thought, yeah, that I can't be distracted by the Christ symbol. Everything else was none and void. But that one part, and I'm like, look, I can't be enticed by my eyes because my Bible says no. It says do not. It's a path to show. I will not do that. She's like, what do you mean? She didn't even realize. And I said, no, nah, this is what I'm testifying about. Stick to the word and you can't go wrong. And I'm proud to say today that the, the fog is clear, the confusion is gone, because God is not a God of confusion. He's a God that everything is in right standing. He brought me back to my old issues and all these different things, and he showed me through circumstances. The red flags were ringing, I'm telling you. It's just like, wow. My mom's looking at me, you okay? Uh, yeah, I don't want to run this past mom. <laughs> I don't want to do that. But God was revealing. So this testament, this part of the testament, because there's another one, but this part of the testament is to illustrate the Bible does work. Trust in it, believe in it, because if God exalts it above himself, it must have vital importance to stand in it, stand on it and breathe out of it. Because trust me, it works. The second testimony was Friday. Um, me and Pastor Chris, we planned because I needed to kind of get these furniture from Facebook Marketplace. And... Um, First time me kind of ever doing this, I thought, yeah, let me let me step into Pastor Chris's sheets here because I felt like a duck out of water. I won't lie. But it was the fact that when we were there, I'm not a person that panics about picking things up. If if we're there, we're there. If we miss it, then you know I don't lose any money. It's, it's win-win. But Pastor Chris, look, oh, you should have told me we, we needed to be there for five. So while we were driving. Me and Pastor Chris were chatting. We not only, we had time. We had time left on the clock. Through traffic, we hardly, I'll probably say we had about 20 minutes traffic. 
But yeah, all the time we were sailing, I mean, I, I prayed that we would have green lights. We had red lights, but God still enabled it for us to get there on time. I mean, picked up oh, the item, came swimming back, and I'm, man, I haven't even put stuff on the shelf yet because it looks too nice to put stuff on it. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm happy with what God has enabled because the price even dropped. Even on the day, there was another two things I picked up with my mom, and the price has even dropped from what they advertised it. God is so good. Believe me. Test, Amen. Try and Amen. test it. See it for yourself. God, it will prove to you. I'm a yes. person that, I, I said to Pastor Chris when we were driving, I'm a type of person that when I go shopping in a supermarket, if I can't hold it, I will not let, I don't need it. That's the kind of guy I am. So if I say, oh, well, Lord, you know, I've only got 30 pounds, God will give me change for 30 pounds with all the things that I'm holding. Trust me, I can, I can carry up to about 75 pounds worth. I tested it. But this is the thing. Trust in God and he will always supersede your intentions. Always supersede mm -hmm. what you will do. Always improve on what you're suggesting because God knows better. God knows what you need the finance for. Because what I was planning to get before was two items, but the person said, oh, we sold it. And I was like, oh, at first I was like, okay, well, you know, it's the first time you try and it's not too worried. And all the things that I had to basically, you know, send to Pastor Chris because of all the kind of going through London time zones and all these different things and time zones, <laughs> going through all these <laughs> zones. I know, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> go for all these zones you have to pay to go for all these zones and london has more than, than than ever and i was like okay lord how am i gonna afford to give pastor chris the money to go through these zones if i buy this one so god made it and well disenabled me getting the one that was 50 pounds and then dropped it in half for what the thing that i really needed and literally that that money made it more available so I could pass the money to Pastor Chris. Everything was covered. Everything was covered. Even had money off. I was like, okay, what do I do with this extra money, Lord? And the first thing, my stomach growled, okay, I need to eat. And I got something to eat. So this is the thing. God looks after everything. Trust Amen. in him and he will show you. It's just, it's just amazing. When you read the Bible and then you walk it with the Bible, knowing that things are covered for, it will come. God is mighty to perform. He will do it for you. Trust, just trust in him. It's too exciting to keep to myself. And it's maybe, oh, yeah. <laughs> trust me, trust me. If you saw my flat, you'd say, Keith, you need shells. And God provided it. Glory to God. Amen, <laughs> amen, 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 amen. Praise be to God. Oh, that is so <laughs> wonderful, Keith. That is such an exciting testimony because God is in the detail. <laughs> God is concerned about your belly. He's concerned about your, your house, your home. He's concerned about us having things in order. He's really concerned about every single thing. Uh, we serve a good God, an exciting God. He's just, as I said, he never ceases to amaze us. So I thank God for that testimony. And I like your exuberance. I like your excitement, Keith, because it's just like, it's like every day is like an, another experience uh, that you can tell about on the goodness of God. And it's, it's an exciting journey. You know, people might say Christianity is boring. It's not boring because God is full of surprises. Is this an it's an it's an adventure? Thank you. It's an, an it's an adventure. <laughs> it's an adventure in faith. Yes. So we thank God for that adventure and, and the exciting times that we are living in. Um, I don't know, if, Don, if you've unmuted. Did you want to share something? No, no. You just you just had your um. You just you just unmuted. Okay. So if there's anybody else that want to share, I mean, can you, is is that your hand up again? Did you want to say something else? Okay. Uh, what about? Um, Devine, is that your hand? Did you want to share something? Amen. That's my hand. Ah, oh, welcome, Devine. Hi. I too am calling from Jamaica. So. Oh um, my God! So glory to God in the Congratulations! You made it. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've been on one on uh, Sunday service already with my other group, and now I'm able to join in with this group. So that's a testimony in itself that God gives wow. us connection yeah. wherever we are. So, yeah, um, I do have a testimony, but I just want to share a little one verse of the song that says, When I think of the goodness of Jesus, 
and all he has done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. Amen. God is so very good. And you know, this morning I was doing some reading, and I was reading in John 4, and one of the verses that stuck out to me as we're speaking about testimonies is John 4, 39. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I did. And this morning you said, you know, for us to give testimonies and it is our testimonies that help others to increase in faith and start to believe in God. So it is only right because that was the message from God. When you go and share the good news, others will come on board with you and start to find Jesus for themselves and not just through the stories that you tell. So this morning, like my brother Keith, I was uh, two parts of a testimony, so I'm not going to keep you too long. But the first one, all I just want to share it because I know in the mornings when I come on the prayer morning and prayers are asked for, God delivers. He answers instantly in many points <laughs> I have found in my favour. Sometimes it might take a little while, but I can always come back and testify in a given time when we're still all together. So I thank God that I know sometimes I, we have to wait for those prayers to be answered. But there are times where he wants to show up and show off. And he's showing up and showing up very much in my life and my family's life. Um, last week, at the beginning of the week, um, I, I was looking at LinkedIn early in the morning. And I've been praying for my son to find an internship. And I know when he first started, I remember saying, using a word to him, if you get the intern and he was like no when I get it he was so positive and that was right throughout the summer going down but more and more as he's tried so many sent out everything and not getting back a good feedback I noticed he's not said when but when I say what happens if you don't get the internship when you return for your fourth year he didn't even say the word I'm going to get or when he's not showing me that he's not happy but I can feel his spirit is lower than before so I said to him send me send me your CVs and your profile and everything that you've been sending out let me look over it I did that and I asked one of the young interns at my workplace who's very good with words very good with putting things I asked her to look over and she helped to um, make the CV more as I said to him as an employee if I look at it I would put it to a side because you get the same so she put a few things in to make it stand out a little bit more I took those CVs, I sent it out to a group of um, my contacts. But the contact that I did actually get through to was someone I didn't even know because I went on LinkedIn the other morning. And when I was on LinkedIn, I was reading uh, something from someone else had put on who's quite well known for his art. He's been doing a like blue water, his name's Cephas. I don't know him that well, but I realised he has a big following. But a young, he was on the link and he explained how a young black man came over to him, interrupted him, maybe almost like his phone call, because he was so taken back by how this black person was speaking so well on the phone. He said the guy didn't recognise him because he is well known for his work, but he just wanted to know more about how to, to emulate what he does because he's seeking, is again, a young man from uni seeking his internship. So what he'd done was he advertised him on his page and by advertising him, so many people started to link in and I just said, well, it's such a good thing it is when we network together. And when I looked at some of the people that answered, also put comments, there was one particular person that just stood out to me because he was doing the same thing as my son studying industrial product design. So I sent him a direct message. Now I sent that message. I didn't realize what time it was in the morning, but it was when I look back at the message, it was about 12, 15 in the morning. I received a message back from him and I actually read it out on the prayer line because I kept calls it came in at that time. It actually came back in at 1.50 before the prayer line. But I did ask from, um, brothers and sisters to pray for my son, Nathaniel, at the time. And, you know, that these messages will come through, that we, it will be a positive outcome. And everyone went into prayer. So while everyone was praying and then after the prayer, when it was rounded up, I sort of heard a notification when I looked the message said 
I would love to help your young son, Nathaniel. Can you give me your number, etc.? So I read that out on the prayer line. Now, I believed it had come in just after prayer. The truth is it came in before. But, you know, God is was working already. But as I said, that notification didn't ding till after. So we know prayer time isn't till after 6.45 in the morning. But I said, sometimes things are held. You know, they're held in waiting because yes. God wants the praises to go up. And as the praises went mm -hmm. up, the blessing came down and I was able to share it there and then to say, see, this is the prayers. Because even though the message was sitting there at 150, I didn't see it, didn't notify, but it wasn't ready. God wasn't ready for it at that time. He wanted to ex uh, his name to be exalted. And when we exalt yes. God, he comes back and he blesses us and he blessed us. And that my son, the, at the end of the day, the, I sent my number. By the end of that day, he kept his promise. He called me. Not only was it <laughs> my son, but he also wants to mentor a lot of, he says, young black people. But I explained what I do, and he says he'd love to be a mentor, black or white. He wants to be a mentor, so we're going to connect when I get back from Jamaica. In the meantime, I handed him over to my son. My son came off that phone call so elated. He was so happy. He was like, yes, it feels secure. I had another one lined up for him who I met during that day, even after the prayer that morning when we prayed. There was another one that um, has offered pretty much already from January to June. But my son said that one, he does, he'll give it to his friend. I said, let's wait for one to complete for, first through. Anyway, my son sent me a message two days ago. It says, good news, big smiley face. He has got his internship. They've offered him a place. Amen. Glory. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I spoke to him and he's got he's gonna to speak to the at first when I read it, I thought it was an interview, but when I went back and reread it, I realized it said um they are looking forward to Nathaniel starting with them. They want to speak to him on Friday to see what he can do because the young interns bring so much energy and they looked at his portfolio on LinkedIn and they loved his portfolio. So yeah, he's on his way. And I know the other one, he, he asked me before I left, can I save that for his friend who's also having a problem finding because they'd study the same thing. So hopefully when I get back, we can line that up for his friend as well. So, you know, but I said to my son before I left, when we prayed that morning and the phone call came, I said to him, Nathaniel, do you realize this morning when I sent those, because he looked at the time and said, Mom, what time are you doing up? I said, you know, when you prayed for something, I said, it's only through God that all of this is happening. And I said, beware, you must always give your thanks back to God. And again, I texted him and I said, remind him, give God the thanks for everything that has come through. This is of God. And I pray that this is, you know, I know my boys know Christ. I know they know God, but I want them to have that more personal relationship. And I'm praying that even these little things will help to draw them closer to God when they see the power of prayer and what it has done. So, you know, I'm just so happy for him. I know my husband, I spoke to him, he said he's just over the moon. He's elated. So, you know, the gentleman, I, I actually sent back a, a WhatsApp mess, a LinkedIn message to him the day after I spoke to him and my son spoke to him initially. Because my son, came, I was going to send him a message in the morning. I get didn't get to. My son came down that afternoon when I came from work, and he says, "Oh, the gentleman has want, rang him back again just to say he spoke to the HR and to the director of design, and they're really excited about him coming on." And this was before the message yesterday. This was last week, and so that afternoon, I did send a message to the gentleman saying I was going to send you a message earlier. And I'll be honest, I didn't get around to it because I was busy in prayer and worship and giving thanks for everything that God, including you, <laughs> coming in. I don't know if the man's a Christian or not, but that's the message I sent. He sent back and said, God has made our paths to cross. So, you know, God is such a good God. And we must also reveal to people when something happens, reveal it's the power of God. Nothing happens through us, but only through the power of God. So, you know, I am so happy Amen. for that. And the second one is, again, all through, you know, coming on prayer time and asking for prayers. I was saying, actually, it wasn't so much asking, but we prayed into other things. But I was sharing that the building permission came through, the planning permission came through for the land. It's been going on for a while, but we needed planning permission. It came through. And on that same day, I was offered 10000 um, um for funding. It was 20 initially, and because they offered 10, they said, as long as I can match the other 10. So I said, well, I'm waiting for something to come through, and it was reliant on the planning. Since I've been in Jamaica, I didn't get the full 10, 
but they've given me 5000 from the other one. And I'm sure yeah. that finances, I will be able to, until I apply for other use money that we have for income coming in. And then another 500, not much, but 500 was granted because I asked for five, I made a bid for 500 to help um, get mental health awareness, some talks on mental health awareness for our young people. And since I come, that's um, from the postcode Magic Little Grant. And everyone was saying, no, it's not worth getting those little bits. But I said, it's, it's got to be for something that they can see is worth it. And I said, let's, initially we're going to do it for CSCS. I said, no, let's do it for mental awareness. And that five, full 500 pound has come through so while I've been on this side I've got 5,500 and again I say you know Beverly Keith everybody who's praying and saying to me you know Bev was kept saying Bev, you're going to get more and there's more to come there's going to be dollars and everything and amen God is just a good God and I'm I know he's not finished yet because he knows what work I've got planned and the work he has That's planned right. to do through me and I know as long as we give praise to God and we are worship worship him in truth and in spirit you know, he's always lifting us up. Just hearing Tamara this morning, and now you spoke to Tamara, and she was speaking about the juice. But then you, she, you did, she didn't speak nothing about else what she was doing, and your spirit led. And then she revealed, well, yes, she is feeding people as well, just as her mum would have done. She's going out and feeding people, and that is the spirit of God. And unless Amen. Tamara comes with testimony, we wouldn't have heard the other part. So it's so important that we share because it, this gives us hope. And, you know, it restores sometimes we start to doubt. We start to lack belief. And we have to say, Father, help my unbelief in those times because we know our God is a good God. And I just want to say, you know, I'm in Jamaica now, sweating like mad. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> I was just sorry that was there the other day. Don't say <laughs> that, please. Even being there is a blessing. I come out to sort out some business out here, and you know, God is already had no power. Need G I G I shut down. Can't get it. my neighbour at the back. Went to the and said, "Can I take some power off your line?" Yes, by all means. We live good. He gave me the power. The internet wasn't working, so I'm staying at a friend's house for the first week, but that God provided me somewhere to stay. He's coming Amen. in Monday. I can go back on Monday because they're coming in to connect my internet on Monday. God is such a good God. And, you know, I just, I, I'm going to shut up because I could pray. I could go on all day, all day. God, I never run out of To anything. God be the glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'll just get to end by the same tune that says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me and you, my soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. Amen. Oh, God. God bless you, Vivian. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your um, trip, your stay, Thank and you. enjoy the sunshine. Bring some back for us. Yeah. <laughs> God bless you. Wonderful testimony to God in the glory. So excited for your son. So excited that God answers prayers. And yes, he, uh, does. he answers prayers. And sometimes it's instant. Ah, oh, this, this is so exciting. So we thank God for all the testimonies this afternoon. And uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to just take our afternoon's offering and then invite our speaker to, to, to come on. Um, that would be no other than our lovely Marcia this afternoon, Marcia Enning. I know there's another Marcia on here, but this is Marcia Enning will be our speaker for this afternoon. We're just going to take our afternoon's offering and then we're going to introduce our wonderful speaker for this afternoon. So I just want you to just just... Just prepare your offering. Just purpose in your heart how much you want to give. And um, God loves a cheerful giver. And he wants us to give um, willingly, not grudgingly. But just give as, 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 as the Lord leads on your heart. Um, the bank details are up on the screen. The sort code and the account number. And it's Impact Alive Ministries. And... Um, I'm just going to pray right now and before Keith ministers to us in song. And I want you to make a note of the sort code and the account number and just give, give, give as God has blessed you because God will, he will really multiply that. Your, 
your giving back to you, that you will never lack, you will never be in want, but you will always have a, have have more than enough to, to provide for your home, your family, and whatever you else you want to do. Uh, so I'm just going to pray. Father, I thank you for this afternoon. I thank you for the wonderful testimonies, God. It's just been an exciting time, a really joyful time to know that, God, you are really real and you are really concerned about us. You're concerned about the detail, about every single detail of our life. And Father, we thank you that, Lord God, you're concerned about our, our, our provision, our financial provision. You're concerned about food on our table. You're concerned whether we pay our bills, Lord. You're concerned whether we have food. Father, we have raiment, Father God. You promise that, Father God, you look after the birds, you look after the, 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 the lilies. So how much more us you will look after us, so, Father, as we give, I pray that you bless it, that it will go to the furtherance of this ministry as we continue to give back into the lives of our brothers and sisters. And, Lord God, um, I thank you that, God, we can be a blessing to our one another and that, Lord, we will always, oh Lord God, um, continue to, Lord, as you lay on our hearts, Lord God, you will, you will grant us, Father God, favour. I pray for open heaven over our lives, Father. I pray for supernatural provision. Father, I pray for open heaven. I pray for, Lord God, that we will, our, our store baskets will never be empty. Our food baskets will never be empty. Father God, I thank you that, you, Lord, that you continue to provide for every single need, Father God, whether it be ministry, whatever it is, Lord God. But, Lord, you will make sure that we will not go begging. You said you've never seen the righteous forsaken and we're having to go begging for bread. So Lord God, we never have to go begging for bread because Lord, you provide for us our daily bread. That's what you said. Give us this day, Lord, our daily bread. So Father, we thank you for your daily provisions as we bless this offering this afternoon. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Thank you. Go ahead, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Thank you very much for that lovely song. And uh, thank you all for your giving. God bless you. May your store basket never be empty. God continues to sustain you at all times. We give God thanks. And um, I have no other greater pleasure than to introduce a wonderful lady. I'm going to say young lady because she's, I'm young and she's the same age as me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm going to call her a young lady. <laughs> and uh, she's a beautiful, wonderful sister. And uh, I just want you to show us some love. No other than our Marcia Enin, everyone. God bless you, Marcia. Welcome as you bring the word to us. Show us some love. Show us some love, everyone. Show us some love. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to thank the Lord for today. A day that he actually planned out. God is so amazing. You know, he wants us to focus, stay in tune, and receive what is provided for us this day, our daily bread. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Um, I just want to thank God for the testimonies that have gone up, because truly they reflect the glory of God and what he's actually doing amongst his people. God is at work. Amen. And we, we, we just give him glory and we just give him praise. But may I say that the Lord has already spoken. Either have the ears to hear, let him hear what the spirit 
have said already. And I just felt like on this platform, God has been speaking prophetically through his mouthpiece, through the mouthpiece of his servant, men servant and women servant. And even though we don't hear, thus saith the Lord, because that was the, the signal that they will use back in the days. Thus saith the Lord. When you know, thus saith the Lord. Is that this is what God is saying. All, everything stops. There's a total silence because you need to hear exactly what the Lord is saying. And I would say to you, brethren, that the Lord has already spoken today. And he has spoken through Pastor Grace. And the exact word that the Lord said through Pastor Grace, I've written it down. It says, the light, the light bulb just gone on. Amen. The light bulb has just gone on. That God has just sh shone a light into a situation, into a condition, into a circumstances. There's no longer any darkness there. And I know that is God that spoke to this woman of God because she is confirm confirming. She's actually confirming everything that God has spoken to me. But in just a few words, God is amazing. Let's just give God thanks for that. Hallelujah. We, thank, you, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, because you've already we spoken. You, Father. Thank you, Lord. Because you and know the all say things, amen. Father. And Father, we thank you for your thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Even say it as it comes forth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Lord. We thank you. Father, as I go to break, and impart what you have imparted to me, Lord. We have spoken to my spirit, Lord. Father, I pray that you will flow in utterance, Lord, so that I may utter what you have imparted to me, Lord. I thank you. Father, I pray that you will feed every heart, every soul, every mind, every spirit right where we are right now. I realize, Lord, that I'm reaching out, Lord, to people that is in different parts of the world. There is no distance between you and man. We thank you, God, that you will continue the work that you have begun today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, I'm going to ask um, so, someone to help me with the reading. I won't make um, any excuse, uh, any excuses, but please bear with me if you hear me cough a bit and I have to go and have a little sip of something to clear my throat. Yes. Okay. Amen. Okay, yeah. okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So already forgiven. Um, thank you. So Genesis 1. 1 to 3. <laughs> Can I read? Uh, no, no. All right, I'll read this one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God 
was moving over the face of the water. And God said, let there be light. Hmm. And there was light. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Mm -hmm. Here goes the, the light bulb that Grace spoke that just switched on. Amen. In the beginning, God used the light. And the light came out of God. He spoke it into being. He said there was darkness. Up, there was darkness everywhere. Even in the face of the waters, there were darkness. There were darkness everywhere. And God spoke. And the light came out of God. He said, let there be light. And it came into being. Um, the next um, chapter I will move on to is John 1. John 1. John chapter 1. Someone could read that for me. From 1 to 14. I'm going to read it from the Amplified. Is that all right? Yeah. Yes. Verse one. In the beginning, before all time, was the word, Christ. And the word was with God. And the word was God himself. He was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him. Mm -hmm. And without him, not even one thing was made that has come into being. Mm -hmm. In him, Christ, is life, was life, and the power to bestow life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness. And the darkness did not understand it or overpower it or appropriate it or absorb it and is unreceptive to it. There came a man commissioned and sent from God whose name was John. This man came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe in Christ, the light, through him. John was not the light, but came to testify about the light. There it was, the true light, the genuine, perfect, steadfast light, which coming into the world enlightens everyone. <laughs> he, Christ, was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, that which belonged to him, his world, his creation, his possession, and those who were his own people, the Jewish nation, mm -hmm. did not receive and welcome him. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the right, the authority, the privilege to become children of God that is to those who believe and adhere, trust in and rely on him, his name. Praise God. Huh. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Amen. So we hear now that John the Baptist, he was born as a witness to bear witness of the light. In fact, the way that John the Baptist behaved his characters, they were questioning him. Who are you? 
You're not like us. The things you do is not the same as us. You are shining. Something about you that is different. Are you the, the light? Are you the Messiah? Are you the one that we are expecting? So they had an expectation. And they saw something that looked different. So they were trying to identify this difference with the true light that we did about to come, but John said, no, I am not. I am not the one. So who are you then? I'm a witness of the light. It's very important for us to know that we are light. We are not in darkness because of Jesus. God has come amongst us in, in human flesh to dwell amongst us. He said he went to his own. He started off amongst his and God said, I went to my own house, went to the house of the Jews, the Jewish chosen people. I came there and they didn't even recognize me. They don't know me. I went to them first because they were the first fruit and I went to them. And I was so different than them that they didn't even recognize me. I came to them as the light and they could not comprehend me. I came to them as a switch on light and their eyes the Bible said the eyes is the light of the body. The eyes could not comprehend because of the darkness that was inside of them. It is serious to know that you have a family and you can go to that family into that family home and they don't recognize you. Mm -hmm. They reject you, they turn you out. Because of the darkness of their eyes, they cannot comprehend you. Huh. Um, Matthew 5, 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hidden. Nor do men light a, 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 a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on the stand and it gives light to all the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father. So here Jesus is saying that we are the light of the world. So the world as it was, was in darkness from the beginning and the spirit spoke 
I said, let there be light. And the light came into being. And through that light, God started to create all things. He made the, the sun, the moon, the stars. Now, when we look at the stars and we look at the moon, we think, oh, that is white. No, it's not white, it's light. It's light. So many times we um, even hear uh, they spoke trying to describe angelic beings that they see. And they will say, oh, they were white. No, they weren't. They were light. They were illuminated. They were glowing. It was the glory. It was the power of God. The light. There's no way that you can say that you are of God and want to be hiding in the darkness. You cannot camouflage with the darkness, for we are light. In fact, when we come in, the darkness run to hide. Amen, amen. Because the darkness can't comprehend us, meaning the darkness can't take we. The darkness can't challenge us. Think about it. When we look up in the sky at night, the whole place is dark. And you will see one little shining star somewhere and it just stands out. It dominates the whole darkness. It glows. And that's who we are. We are the light of God. Jesus Christ said to us that we are the light. Now, Jesus was the first light and John the Baptist came and be a witness of the light. And then out of Jesus, we came. We have been given birth to through the spirit. He said, as many as receive him, you have been empowered to become light. You have become empowered to become sons of God. We are chosen. He said, this world as it is, is dark. Not because of physical darkness, but because of spiritual darkness. You see, the God of this world the fallen angel, the unclean spirits. They have blinded the eyes of the people lest they see the truth and believe. So it's like, when we're supposed to be enjoying, because of the fall of Adam and Eve, sorry, We are struggling to see things as we should, to focus. As Pastor Gray said, the light is just switch on. When the light just switch on, all of a sudden you can see everything clearly. But when the light is dark and not switch on, you're stumbling. You think you're doing the right thing, but it's wrong. They said blind cannot lead blind because the two of them will fall into the pit. Because nobody can see the pit. The leader is blind, so he's dropping the pit. 
and the blind one drop in the pit too. But when you have your light switched on, the light of your understanding, the, the light of God, the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God. And it's simple as receiving Jesus Christ in your life. That is the light switch. All of a sudden. Mm. And it's a thing that it gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. <laughs> Let's go again. Um, let's go to Acts 1. No, Acts, Acts, Acts 9, verse 1. <coughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Acts 9, Keith. Yes. Could you read for me? Acts 9, start from 1. Go down. Ready? Yep, reading it from the yep. Amplified. Meanwhile, yep. Saul, still drawing his breath, hard from threatening and murderous desire against disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and requested of him letters the synagogues sorry, letters to the synagogues at Damascus, authorizing him so that if he found any man or woman belonging to the way of life as determined by faith in Jesus Christ, he might bring them bound with change to Jerusalem. Now, All as right. Pause a minute. Yep. Here we have a man called Saul. He was a mighty warrior on behalf of the old order. He did a rub with people that want to mess up with their religious order. Mm. He was a renowned warrior. He did a rub, he didn't care. And when he heard about the movement of the new movement, which is the new order, the new testament, the light of the Christian faith was growing, was expanding. In fact, it seems that he wanted to take over the old order. So he went in, he was so angry, he was fuming. He had murderous, murderous, um, he had murderous intentions. Right? He had murderous intention. He went to the highest height and got a written letter, permission to go to Damascus, to go and deal with those Christians. He had been, he had a whole stream of murdering murdering and killing. So now he's looking for permission to go and fulfill his atrocity. Go on, Keith. Now, as he traveled on, he came near to Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him and he flew to the ground. Then he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me, harassing, troubling, and molesting me? And Saul said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is dangerous, and it will turn out badly for you if you keep kicking against the good, against the goad, if to offer vain and perilous resistance. Sorry, Trump can you? Yeah. Sorry. Can you read that again? What, verse 5? Yes. And Saul said, who are you, Lord? 
And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is dangerous and it will turn out badly for you to keep kicking against the goat, to offer vain and perilous resistance. Trembling and astonished, he asked, Lord, what do you desire me to do? The Lord said to him, but arise and go into the city and you will be told what to, you must do. The men who were accompanying him were unable to speak for terror, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul got up from the ground, but through his eyes, but though his eyes were opened, he could see nothing. So they fed, uh, led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Jesus, gone. And he was unable to see for three days. And he neither ate nor drank anything. Now there was in Damascus a disciple named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he answered, here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, get up and go to the, to the street called Straight and ask at the house of Judas for a man of Tarsus mm -hmm. named Saul. For behold, he is praying there. And as he had seen in a vision, a man named Ananias entered and lay his hands upon him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many people tell about this man, especially how much evil and what great suffering he has brought on your saints at Jerusalem. Hmm. Now, he, now he is here and has authority from the high priest to put in chains all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, go. For this man is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my Jeez. name for yes. the Gentiles and kings and descendants of Israel. Yes. For I will clear, I will make clear to him how much he will be afflicted and must endure and suffer for my name's sake. So yes. Ananias left and went into the house and he laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you along the way by which you came here, has sent me that you may recover your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he recovered his sight. Then he arose and was baptized. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, if we have Saul on his journey, right, with such rage and anger, bitterness, that the spirit of the, 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 the enemy was had totally taken over and he thought that he was doing good, but he wasn't. And he said, in free, he said that Suddenly, on the road to Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven. Here goes the light. A light from heaven struck him. Here goes the light again. The light has just switched on in his life. Amen. So physically, he lost his vision. The power of the light licked him down. He's like, it's like he was proper, proper lost. He had a connection with the light, the real light. <laughs> Sent him into total darkness, took away his vision. But reality is, bega is beginning, had already started. Even though he couldn't physically see anything, his journey had just started because he met the light. He met the greater light. That light he couldn't dispute. That light he couldn't, uh, he couldn't mix it up. He knew that he had encountered with some greater power. That light that was the 
that John the Baptist came and was a witness of this light. When he came to his senses, he realized that all those people that he had murdered, he was killing, they were all Jesus' seed. They were all sons of God. They were all children of God. He said, so why are you persecuting me? He said, but it's not you, it's not you, it's these people. These, he said, they are me, they are me. But you know what happened? It was the light that brought him to his senses. It's in such a way, when people saw him, they terror, they, they he terrorized them to even remember the characteristic of this guy, his nature, his personality. It sends ter terror and chill through their bones. It caused their hair on their arms to stand up. Because when they think how wicked, brutal, ruthless, how, how this man just operated and just lay life low. And he is there? No. A man can't just change that, that overnight. No. He's coming. No. He has already got his judgment on him. Soon as they saw him, they judge him by his past and not by his present. You see, when the power of God comes, when the power of God comes in, you cannot compare the past with the present. When the light of God comes in and overtake an area, you cannot compare it to how it was when it was dark. When the spirit of revelation comes into your mind and reveals something to you, you cannot comprehend what it was like before in comparison to how it is now. Those who knew you in the past don't know you now. Man. But God says, mm -hmm. I know you. He said, come to me, I know you. But for the one that is in darkness, he said, depart from me. You are in darkness. I know, I know you not. And so Saul had a wicked name. They knew him as a wicked man. And you know what? Saul's, Saul, Saul's name was changed from Saul to Paul, right? The name Saul meaning arts questions. Yeah, that was the name Saul, it means ask question. He went, did he went and ask some question? Did he went and ask permission to do this big and dotted onslaught? Mm -hmm. You know, he always wants a reason to do something negative. And all he needed was to get the higher rocks to support him. Because he is willing to do the dirty job. And it wasn't just him. He had other people with him. And those other people, you see, when Saul got licked down, they were in shock. They were shocked. Because mm -hmm. they never see anything like this. Mm. They don't know if it was a flying star. <laughs> they don't know I mean they can't 
explain what that light was. But all they saw was a great light came down and lit down so You see the men, they didn't even know what was going on. They didn't know what was going on. But God knew. And you know the good thing about it is, all this time, when so was going on with his wickedness, God had already planned his name change. God has already planned his location change. That the passion that he had, it was going to turn for good. That God was going to get the glory out of this reckless man. God was going to get the praise out of this glorious, glorious conversion. How did, how did this man change? Could Saul, could you testify please? Uh, first of all, I would like to say that my name is no longer Saul. It is now Paul. Hey! And then, um, how was your conversion? I saw a great light. Amen. What was this light? The light spoke to me and said it was Jesus. Hey, Jesus of mercy. Testimony. So what happened to your sword? What happened to your warriors that you was uh, moving with? Where are they? That was the past. That was the past. I don't know where they are. I was blind for three days. That was the past. All I know is what I am now. Since the light come, since I regained my vision, I'm on a different mission. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Amen. the name... The name now that Paul received, it means humble. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine? Paul, your name is now uh, a change to humble. My God, when they saw him, they, they was quaking in their boots. They're thinking, no, nah, man, this man is a fake man. He's, he, he, he's going to do something. He's going to, he's, he's another conspiracy. He's another trap. He's another technique. He's coming to murder us. No, the man has changed completely humble now. Humble. <laughs> Could you imagine such a raving of, I mean, and he, have you ever seen people that are suffering with proper anger? They will smash up the place. They will wreck the place. And feel no remorse. But now this man is totally changed. He's now humble. He's so soft. He's so gentle. He's so comely. He's so inviting. He's so enticing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I'm coming down because the light switch is on. The light switch is on. Now, Keith, could, you, could we go to um, Acts 28, please, Keith? Of course. The first one. Hold on. Right, um, yes, yeah, you can start reading from there. Acts 28, verse 1. Yeah, yeah. That's right. after we were safe on the island, we knew and recognized that it was called Malta, and the natives showed us unusual and remarkable kindness. For they kindled a fire and welcomed them and received us all, since it had begun to rain and was so cold. Now Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, and he was laying them on the fire, when a viper crawled out because of the heat and fastened itself on his hand. When the natives 
saw the little animal hanging from his hand, they said to one another, doubtless, this man is a murderer, for thou, for though he has been saved from the sea, justice, the goddess of, avenge, of avenging, has not permitted that he should live. Then Saul simply shook off the small creature into the fire and suffered no ill effects. However, they were waiting, expecting him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But when they had watched him a long time and saw nothing fatal or harmful had come to him, they changed their minds and kept saying over and over that he was a god. Thank you. Yes, that he was a god. Thank you, Keith. Sure. You see what is happening here now? Sorry. <laughs> you see, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see what happened in here now? So, Paul on his journey, they suffered shipwreck and they landed in Malta. Yeah. At the time, it was raining, it was cold, and that. But you know what happened is they welcomed them. And light a fire, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. so that it could be warm and give them, like, you know, hospitality. Because you have to think about it, those days were different than these days, yeah. yeah. So they had a light cold fire or wood fire, and they was, you know, um, adding to the fire. And uh, Paul pick up a bottle of stick to put into the fire, mm -hmm. not knowing there was a snake camouflage in the stick. And as he threw it in the fire, the snake didn't want to drop in the fire, did it? <laughs> so he to the man of God's hand. <laughs> and this was a deadly snake. Mm, viper. The other sticks have gone in the fire and has already started to catch. Mm. Here we see a snake biting, hanging on, a poison, a deadly poisonous snake hanging on the hand of the man of God. Mm. And they are looking those people that were there, because in Malta they heard about the wickedness that it went worldwide, what this man was doing when he was Saul. Hmm. Yeah? Yeah. So, they said, what? Love? Yes, yes. Yes, judgment has leaked. This man has been <laughs> wicked. <laughs> right? He's been going around from uh, village to village, town to town, murdering the people them. And now justice has caught up. He think he got away from the shipwreck. And he run here. And he's just going to come and warm himself and get away. Nonsense, man. What you see if he's not dead? Mm. And they will, you know what happened? The man of God, he just shake off, shake <laughs> off the snake, shake off the enemy. They are expecting you to drop dead. Make them mm. look. <laughs> Dirty because what people. I was then is not what I am now. Oh, no. yeah. Amen. Amen. What I had my physical power was in my weapons. But now my spiritual power is in the word of God. Amen. And they were looking and they were talking amongst themselves, proper gossipers. So, 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 so. <laughs> he said, he said, oh, let's try and help him, whatever. Squeeze that part of your hand, like, so that the poison don't run through your body. They said, make him drop that now. Let me see if he's going to survive this one. Because justice has come. 
Hey, hey. Wow. You know what the Lord had spoken to me and told me? He said, in this season, there's going to be sudden death. Ooh. However, he said, I will be with my people. I will preserve them that if they drink any deadly thing, it will not mm. poison them. The harm. Yes. Mm. And if any deadly snakes try to poison their body, it will not have none of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, the judgment of this world or the judgment of man is to judge you by your past and try to connect present events with your past. It cannot happen. Man. With Man. God, there is no connection with Man. light and darkness. Light and darkness cannot reign together. They mm. are separate. What I did when I was in the world is there. What I do now is a new thing. Mm. Because the reality is that now I am walking in the light. Mm. I am walking in illumination with wisdom, not foolishness. I am not walking with my understanding shaded but my understanding is connected and that is the, connected with my divine purpose mm. yes I was a murderer but God is not judging me from my past mm -hmm. he allowed me to go through he, he didn't make me do it but he allowed me to have my free will and if that was my will, then he allowed me to do that until the appointed time. He said, no. When he switched on the light, all of a sudden the murderous intentions, mm. the deception. And the thing about it is, oh, Jesus. We can connect Paul with a lot of religion, mm -hmm. religious mm -hmm. behavior, Religiosity. thinking that you can overpower these other religions by using violence. Mm. Let us not exclude them because we have to continue with the truth because the truth will prevail. The light, if they are genuinely deceived, when God will genuinely bring the light, boom, through the word. So let me show you what happened. So it's like you're going on, you're going on in darkness. Your understanding is darkness. The way about you is in darkness. But mm. God comes and he shines his light. Amen. He shines his light. Mm. As Pastor Gray said, the light is switched on. Mm. The light is switched on. You cannot go backwards. It doesn't matter how you used to be, how they judge you. It doesn't matter what circumstances you are, you are meeting, it's not the same as it was then. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. Let us keep focus on where we're going. Help us not to be judged by the past when we were in darkness. Mm -hmm. Let us stay under the light because it's the light that gives us understanding. It illuminates our mind, our spirit. Our mm -hmm. heart. Mm -hmm. You see the changes. There will be major changes. 
Because when the light comes, the light is the creativity. You're able to see. You're able to discern. You're able to capture every single moment, every single revelation. The light is so important. Back in the olden days, they used to have torches. They used to dip the torches, wrap it on wood and tie it firmly. And then they dip it in oil. And then they will light it with a fire. And that would be a light. They will use coal firewood, light it, and it will set a light. Because I remember even some years ago going to Jamaica, we used to go on and find firewood for putting at the, the, the stove for, 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 for light so that we can cook outside. And that was natural fuel. fuel. It wasn't like electric fire in the house or gas fire in the house. This was natural light. Right? God has empowered us and give us the ability to set a light. We must not be in darkness. We are the light of the world. We must shine without fail. It's an automatic. We are not joined to the system, but we are joined to God. Amen. Nowadays, light is more advanced. You have electric light, you have solar, they even have solar light. Solar light uh, is like, is like it draws the energy from the sun, and then when it's dark, it just switches on automatically. Hallelujah. And these are all man made tools. Mm -hmm. We the light that we have is great car. Mm -hmm. Amen. When he said, when the word of God says that I saw right. a people that I could not number, they were dressed in white, they were had robes of white. I would say they were completely illuminated. It was the light, the eternal light. Praise God, hallelujah. Amen. So I would say that as I, I say that God has spoken to me mm. and in this season, there will be lots of death, yeah? But as for the children of God, they've been looking for us to drop, but mm. take it up. Amen. Amen. Shake it off. Shake it off. As Pastor Grace said, keep your light switched on while the bridegroom carried their own slumber and slept and their lamps went out. And then it was a midnight time when they woke up, they all found themselves in darkness. But you know what happened? The wise had extra oil. Top up your lamp and light up. Top up and light up. Because we are the light of the world. We are not foolish. Leave the foolish to stumble about. But we are of the light. Let us keep focused. Let's keep the light switched on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, oh, go ahead. Oh, thank you Marcia. Oh, my gosh. God has spoken. Oh, my God. Thank you, Marcia. This is a, a revelation on a half. Thank you. you know, everywhere, when the light came, it illuminated the darkness. Yes. The darkness had to flee. And from Genesis, you said, God said, let there be light. And then the darkness just had to vanish. Yeah. And, and that's what we are. We are the, 
We are the light of the world because we carry the light of Christ inside of us. So any dark place that we go into, the light has to come. The yeah. light has to shine. Thank and the you. light has to, uh, has to uh, 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 illuminate the darkness. So Master, we thank you. I just want you to just pray um, for the platform and pray <laughs> this word that God will continue to let that revelation just every day illuminate every every darkness that we're going through and so that we're able to get the understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Father, you said in the mouth of two or three witness, it is true. Father, you gave me a word about the light and then you said, Possible grace to confirm it, so we know that it's true. Father, we want to thank you because you want us to light. You don't want us to stay in darkness, Father. You don't want us to stay seated, because Lord, the the the, the light is our dwelling place, the light is our safe place. The light is our hiding place. The light is our place of protection against the enemy of darkness. Mm -hmm. Father, the darkness cannot comprehend us when we're in your light. Father, open our spirit to the revelation. Mm -hmm. Upon all the attacks and the onslaught that is taking place right now. The safest place for us to be is in the light of God. The light, the light, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, let us not run away and go into darkness. Jesus. That will not be our portion. You are the greatest light that ever walked this earth. You came down and you dwell amongst man in human flesh. You empowered us with yourself. And you said that we are the light of the world. Father, enlighten us today. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To light up. And to illuminate us. Empowered us with the ability to come out of every darkness. Thank you, Lord. Father, let us shine for you. Shine. Jesus. Shine from now to eternity. The word the song said, This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Shine, shine, Lord. Shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. shine. shine Don't Lord. you blow my little light out because I'm gonna make it shine. Help us to shine on when you look upon the earth. Let you see stars on the earth shining the same way out when we look up into the heavens. Oh, hallelujah. We see the, 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 the element is spotted with stars. When you look up on the earth, Lord, let us shine. Because we know that when the forces are looking at us, they can see light. That is the reality. Thank you, Lord. That is the reality. When they are looking at us, they are seeing light. Because we are the light of the world. Thank we are Lord. the light of the world. And we will continue to shine. Shine, Lord. Through every dark situation. Help Amen. us to shine, Lord. Jesus. Through every dark condition, reset our mindset. Restart us. Just like what you did from Saul to Paul. Reset us. From the past, it doesn't matter before we be reset. We have been switched on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah, glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, let us come together. 
when we come together, it will be a greater light. Hallelujah. Join us, your children, worldwide. Join us together as one light. Jesus, yes, Lord. The kingdom of light. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Help us to stand fast in our liberation yes. and not to entangle yes. ourselves back yes. in dark things. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the beginning was your word and the Lord spoke. Hallelujah. The Lord, the Spirit moved. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. You cannot lie. We are the Lord. We want Amen. to thank you, Lord. Thank we pray, you, Lord. Lord, that you will keep our fires burning. Yes. God. That we will keep our lambs well trimmed, well topped. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray against every form of stubborn darkness Jesus. that wants to latch on, that wants to hang on. Darkness, the spirit of death, the poisoning spirit. We shake it off. Shake it off. Amen. We shake it off. Shake it off. our light. Shake it off. It yes. was in the past. Yes, Lord. It was in the past. Yes, Jesus. In fact, a few years before that Paul was changed by the light. And now he's in a condition where the enemy is trying to poison him. Jesus. Trying to latch on. The enemies that are observing him wants to see him drop dead. But the power of the light still prevails. Amen, amen, amen. Still prevails. Amen. Amen. Every coming circumstances, the power of my conversion still prevails. The light that converted me, it still prevails. In whatever is coming in the future, the light that converted me and changed my life will prevail. Hallelujah. It will prevail. And though they seek and watch for my downfall, hallelujah, mm. they will be shot. Amen. They will call upon the name of God. Oh, and they truly these people are of the light of God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus, name. Thank you, Jesus. In Thank Jesus. you, Jesus. Name. Thank you, Lord. Church, I'm Thank asking you, Chris, in a prayer. While I was praying, um, my husband brought me a prayer request. It's one of his, um, one of his um, sister, um, sister, very, very close family member, have just lost a sister, which is oh, kind of, um, she and the whole family is in bereaving, and oh. uh, her name is Elizabeth. She is. This, uh, she just lost her sister and she's in bereaving. So we just want to just lift her up in prayer, if that's okay, please. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Father, you know all things. Thank you, Jesus. And you are a God of comfort. You are a God of peace. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, at this time, I I just commit Patrick and his siblings into your hands right now. And I pray your strength upon them, even as they have lost their sister. Jesus. Father, I pray that you will encourage them. Father, even if we recognize and we believe that 
She is absent from the body, but present with you, Lord. We have much to re rejoice about and think, give you thanks for. And so, Father, at this time, I just pray that grief will not overtake them, but a sense of purpose, a sense of knowing that this is an assigned time for their loved one to leave. Father God, they will draw comfort from that. And so, Father, we just pray your strength and you pray that you minister to their every need right now because there will, there will be many that will be looking to them now and looking to mourn with them. And, Father, we know that that takes resources, that takes financial, material resources, Father God, but it also takes a strength of character to be able to be there for other people, even as you're looking, they are looking for comfort and strength at this time, for strengthen them. So strengthen them supernaturally, I pray. Let them know that they're not left comfortless or alone or destitute. But Father, let them know that you're an eternal God and that Father, even as we commit everything into your hands, we pray an open heaven and a favor that will be upon them right now. Father, we thank you for your strength and your peace in the midst of loss. But where earth has lost, heaven has gained, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Well, thank you. Marcia, bless you. Thank you for your word again. Um, the light. In him is life. In Jesus. And the, 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 the passage you, um, I read from, actually, it says, in him is life. And that life is the Zoe life, that God kind of life. That is eternal life. And that life is actually is the light of men. That when you see the word light, it talks about development. It's actually the development of each and every one of us. God illuminates through each and every one of us to develop us so that we might shine as the light of Christ. Because it's not our own light. It's the light of Christ that shines through each and every one of us. And so we're in a darkened world to illuminate this world. That we have been transformed from the kingdom of darkness. And that we have been translated in the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ, who is the light of this world. So we bless God. I just want all of you to be aware that everywhere you go, you, you ought to shine. Let the men see your good works and come to know and glorify our Father God. So it's not about you. It's about the Father. Praise be to God. Um, so thank you, Marcia. And uh, bless you. Just to let you know that um, in two weeks' time, we're having our love feast again. And uh, this time, uh, we're putting a little emphasis on the children. And in terms of... Uh, we're going to have something special for them to enjoy. And so when, as you're looking to come, um, invite your friends who have children, welcome them, and uh, God will truly bless them as they come into the tent of meeting, into the presence of God, a marquee. Mm -hmm. right. So, uh, but we're expecting for God to just move by his spirit. And so even in the, in the midst of festivity, as it will be approaching Christmas, we always remember Jesus. And the reason for the season is Jesus Christ himself. And so, we, we, so um, just be mindful of that. I, I, I believe we already sent out some information as regards to the date and uh, the location and uh, during the week, we're gonna on Wednesday. We're gonna have uh, a pre-planning meeting, so 
again, if any of you want to be a part of that and uh, you want to support us in terms of the, the love feast, um, please um, join us um, at that meeting. Any way, any way you can help, please come and avail yourself to be used of God and support us in terms of what God is doing. God is good, and uh, we've had, received so many testimonies um, through the love feast, and uh, we continue to do so. And uh, so we just believe in that this time God will move in the area of the children. Let's not leave them out, God said. <laughs> so we praise, thank God for that. So. Thank you for um, coming on, every one of you. Bless you. And, um, you know, um, what I'm going to say again, having said that, um, is that if any of you feel that you want to um, contribute on a day in terms of a song or something that you want to bring to the table, um, God has impressed something on your heart, whether it be poetry, whether it be a song, whether it be a dance. Drama, even. Drama, whether it be a rap. Uh, we're so blessed by uh, Marcia, the last Marcia time. the other time um, yeah. by a rap. <laughs> I have to say a rap because it wasn't. Uh, we, I was going to say we needed an interpreter, but I understood everything Marcia was saying. <laughs> Your American style, <laughs> but it was beautiful. It was beautiful, and so um, you know, any and as I said, anybody of any one of you, if you feel that you want to contribute on a day, just let us know ahead of time. Yes, Daniel. Uh, yes, yeah, so if you want to do a rap, Daniel, an Italian rap or something like that, you're well able. You're welcome. Um, but bless you. We want. We would love every single one of you to be there. I know that some of you are tuning in from abroad. And uh, but I believe that we're gonna um, have it. Um, Zoom. Uh, we're gonna have it on um, streamline. Streamline live on Zoom, so you'll be you won't miss out. And so be blessed. Um, thank you, every one of you. Shine. Every one of you shine. Uh, continue to shine, and uh, we're gonna have a wonderful wonderful week i'm expecting this week that god is going to move upon the platform amen i pray and devotion again and so i'm um, inviting all of you to be a part of that and support us in that and support one another because it's all about you it's not necessarily about me um but it's about you and the Everyone people people that you will invite onto the platform that god really meets them at the point that they need all right, so praise be to God. Bless you, every one of you. I just thank God for Michelle for coming on. Sister Marcia from Jamaica. Amen. Tuning in from Jamaica again. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. And, welcome, uh, Marcia. Welcome, Marcia. Jackie Brown. Welcome you, Joanna. Joanna B. Joby. Donna, bless you again. Dorcas. Bless you, Pastor. You're welcome. Welcome, Dorcas. Mish, I uh, believe that's... Michelle Callum. Michelle, bless you. Welcome you. Uh, Maxine, yes. welcome you. Mother bless Brown, you, that's my mom. Bless um, you, Pastor welcome. Chris, Pastor Gray. Maxine, bless welcome, you, Pastor Chris. Pastor Chris. Siri, Grace. welcome you. Charmaine, we welcome you. Yeah. Bless you. Bless you, Pastor Chris. Bless you, Pastor Gray. She's looking good today. As always, they're glowing, they're glowing. <laughs> Peter, welcome you, Daniel. Mm. Pansy, Pansy, welcome, Pansy. Welcome you, Pansy. And Dana, and Dana, Dana welcome. welcome you. Every one of you have a blessed Sunday Bless and have an empowered week. Yeah. Blessings, everyone. Bless Bless you. Remember to shine. Bye, Sam. All right. Bless Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank so, you. Thanks. Just take the um, note, notice on board and, and just uh, share it with your loved ones and your friends. Praise God. Um, I believe Keith is going to play us out with a song. Um, <coughs> hallelujah.